Jack. I have unanimous consent request that my Republican colleagues read these documents and stop making a false claim. Good luck with that. <laughs> Legitical response. What's up, y'all? Thanks for tuning in. It's another episode of Legitical Response. It's not your average episode, though. We're going to be kind of getting into some fun stuff, I guess, if you want to call it that. I'm just kind of looking at this clip I came across of some politicians bickering at each other. And come to find out, this type of stuff goes on all the time when they're doing Senate hearings and congressional hearings. It's weird, but it's very organized and structured in kind of an odd way. And, you know, everything said goes on to the record, and they have to vote whether it's going to be on the record or not, which seems weird, but you'll see it in the video. But nevertheless, the video kind of shows what they do in these hearings. So here we go. Let's roll the clip. For what Madam purpose Chair? does Mr. Cicilline seek recognition? I have several unanimous consent requests. Uh, my first unanimous consent request is the uh, ranking member made reference to a Department of Justice whistleblower memo and grossly mischaracterized its content. So I'd ask unanimous consent that I'd be permitted to read the memo into the record. So you object. You object to? You have your own five minutes. Yeah. Well, you object to reading into the record the memo that was okay. Not if you're on your time. Then I ask unanimous Then I ask unanimous consent that the document that the Republicans are afraid to have be read aloud be introduced into the record. The hearing that they're doing is pertaining to this. Uh, Attorney General Garland, on October 4th, you issued an unprecedented memo that involves the Department of Justice and the FBI and local school districts, local school boards, nothing like it in our country's history. It was based, you testified, on this letter from the National School Board Association that we now know the White House was involved in writing. They've retracted the letter. They've apologized for the letter. They say they regret the letter, but you won't retract the memo and said earlier that you have no regrets. And you've defended yourself repeatedly today before this committee by saying, well, you're focused on violence. But now, of course, we've seen the memo from your own Justice Department advising state and local and other prosecutors about all of the different federal causes of action that they can bring against parents that are not about violence. They're about harassment and intimidation. I'm looking here at this memo. It identifies no fewer than 13 possible federal crimes involving harassment and intimidation, including making annoying phone calls now they're gonna have some objections to this being put into the record simply because it's not facts that he's trying to put into the record it's actual op-eds that people wrote on websites that are an opinion it's not really fact it's just an opinion of this specific person journalist or whatever they just put their opinion out there and he's trying to put this on record as fact and it's just funny what they say watch without objection i have unanimous consent request that a a document a, a politifact head uh, with a heading no the federal government isn't using the patriot uh, act to treat uh, parents madam like chair madam Harris. chair be introduced unanimous into consent, the record. Madam Chair, point of order. Ma- unanimous consent is limited to describing the document. Which I am doing right now. In. Madam no Chair, one is I, have, I have the floor. Doc- all right, doc- all right. Hold on, guys. Okay. I'm asking Lincoln unanimous consent it. that the, the document Headline? entitled, No, the federal government isn't using the Patriot Act to treat parents like domestic terrorists made a part of the record. How many votes? Without objection. I have unanimous consent request that a document entitled McCarthy's false claims that Garland called parents terrorists be made a part of the record. Sorted without objection. Document entitled Attorney General never called concerned parents domestic terrorists be made a part of the record. Without objection. And finally, a fact check that Kevin McCarthy that reads Kevin McCarthy keeps repeating false claim that Attorney General called parents terrorists for wanting to attend school board meetings be made part of the record. With that objection. And I have unanimous consent request that my Republican colleagues read these documents and stop making a false claim. Good luck with that. Um, uh, 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 the uh, gentleman uh, just order. impugned our integrity. 
point I of order. I would demand that his words be taken down. I he is not the, allowed under the rules to impugn false statements by this side. And as far as PolitiFact and some of those, they couldn't okay. find the truth with both hands. That's that's a separate allegation. You know, but I, I would like the I would like the gentle lady's words to be taken. I've asked, down. yeah. Well, I've asked the words to be Texas. taken down. He no, 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 no. Your your words I like to be the taken rules down. Like that. Committee will suspend. Committee will suspend. See what I mean? And apparently this goes on all the time. I see this in a lot of these hearings. I just never thought to actually make a video about it, but hopefully this will be entertaining. Let's keep rolling. Yes, in response to Mr. Cicilline's comments, um, the gentlelady said, good luck with that. I think that impugns uh, the Republican side. I think that is actually totally inappropriate. And if we're gonna, if we're gonna start letting people out of order just throw in throw in uh, documents uh, man i've got about 20 sitting right here see what i mean i don't know who this guy is but i think i have to agree with him that was kind of unprofessional if i must say let's keep going i'll withdraw the comment thank you and now we'd like to recognize miss jackson Lee. well We've got to have a ruling on my request that the gentleman's words be taken down. Where he said we made false statement. Reading the head. Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Raskin. Um, as I understand the gentleman's point, he said that the gentleman from Rhode Island had impugned his false statements, and perhaps the gentleman from Rhode Island would just say he does not impugn his false statements. I don't think Mr. Gomert made any statements. I think the report were repeating, uh, reporting to this committee the headlines of five documents that said those claims are false. Those are what the documents say. I'm not going to change the words of the documents. And I'm not impugning them. I, I'm simply putting into the record those documents that, in fact, refute the claim. But once again, those documents aren't facts. Those are op-eds. It's not a fact. I don't see how he's trying to put that into the record. Maybe he thinks he can do that, but from everything I've learned, simply because it's not facts. But let's go. The gentleman said that the ranking member grossly uh, mischaracterized the statements. And that is not a breach of decorum. I think it is an yes, accurate is. statement. Well, it's in my opinion, accurate. he grossly mischaracterized the contents of the DOJ memo. That's absolutely pr appropriate. It impugns intention. No, it does not impugn. It doesn't say anything about his intention. You've gotten so used to making statements that are outside the rules of decorum that you don't even recognize when you do. You can't just constantly malign people on this side of the aisle. Madam Chair, are you prepared to rule? So that's pretty much it. I mean, that's just some craziness. I don't know if y'all found this entertaining or not. I sure did. But that's all I got for this one. I just want to remind everybody, if you could, hit that subscribe button for me. I sure would appreciate it. Hit that like button. You know, it helps out. So that's all I got, though. Be positive. Peace.